circulatory system. Uh, the students can select their own. They are very good, sometimes they suggest, so why not? Um, we have them uh, propose uh, videos that they like. Uh, also, they can be shared. Uh, students can share them, and also teachers can uh, share them. And they say, uh, teachers' time and effort, we don't have to prepare our own uh, videos or animations or posters or whatever they are uh, there. The literature shows that use of uh, digital video in ESL classrooms enhance uh, students' listening comprehension uh, skills of lectures. Now, criteria for selecting uh, uh, animations and videos, whichever topic you look for, you will find many uh, videos. Uh, so, it doesn't mean that uh, we can just take the first one, the second one, and have the student uh, watch, those, uh, watch it. No, we have uh, to take into consideration the topic familiarity. So when the students are beginners, they are freshmen, and they are at the beginning of the semester, and their English is still poor. So we can use uh, topics that are familiar, like digestive system, circulatory system, because they study these in high school. Uh, in their own language. So they know uh, what the digestive system consists of. Uh, the only difference is that they don't, know, don't, they don't know it in English. They don't know the technical terms uh, in English. And also the video length. When the students are beginners, uh, it's better to use short videos and then increase uh, the length uh, gradually. Uh, another uh, criterion is the speed of the speaker. When I played some of the videos, I found out that the speaker speaks very fast because they are native speakers, uh, they are adults, and um, the videos, um, the, the speakers, they target native speakers, students who are native speakers, not students who are not native speakers. So we have to look for uh, videos um, where the speaker speaks not very slowly, but like average uh, speed that the students can follow. Uh, another thing is the difficulty level. <coughs> because the purpose in ESP is to teach English, to teach the language, the uh, technical terms and uh, the functions. <coughs> and uh, It's not to teach new content, uh, a complex content, like how surgery <coughs> is done or this and that. Um, so um, it's better to um, take into consideration the difficulty level of the concepts, the information in the video, and the students' proficiency level. Uh, if they are good, if um, it's like at the end of the semester, uh, their English is um, not so bad, not so poor, um, we select um, videos that are appropriate for uh, this kind of um, students. Uh, also students' interests. Sometimes they like this, they don't like this, so we, we have to take into consideration that. And the subject area, if they need to learn about biochemistry, uh, anatomy, uh, biology, chemistry, so we pick uh, topics or videos uh, in uh, a particular uh, subject area. Um, uh, at first, it's better to provide general medical topics with which students are familiar, and then they try several. The teacher has to try, has to watch the video in advance before assigning it to the students. And it's better to assign like two or three videos on the same topic, like the heart, for example, or circulatory system, uh, so that you target different uh, student levels. Uh, so that the students who are a little bit poor, they, they find what's uh, wh uh, appropriate for them. The ones who are advanced, they find uh, something that's appropriate for them. Okay, how to find uh, medical animations and videos? <clears throat> it's so easy. You just enter any topic. Osteoporosis, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, digestive system, ulcer, whatever. Uh, trauma, stroke, or any topic in Google or in Google uh, in YouTube, uh, and then even Google will suggest even search terms for you. So and then click uh, videos or Im 
even images. You will get sometimes the animations like uh, the DNA. Um, okay. And then um, um, you will get a list of uh, the videos if you uh, use YouTube and then uh, look at the title and also look the length in, it gives you the length in minutes and seconds. Two, three, one hour, like that. Uh, where can we post uh, animations and videos? Uh, if you are using a an online course management system, like Blackboard, Moodle, so you can post um, the name of uh, the title of the video and the link to that video and the students can um, copy them and then uh, uh, search for the uh, video using uh, the <coughs> link. Uh, if you have an uh, online discussion forum, a blog, or a Facebook page, Facebook is very popular and we can use it also for teaching and learning purposes, or Twitter. Uh, me, I um, use Twitter to post uh, lots of things for the students with the link. So it's very convenient. Okay, now when we teach using uh, uh, animations and videos, <coughs> there are three stages. Um, there are things that the teacher should do before the students use the animation or video. And there are things that the teacher should do while the students are watching the animation and video. And uh, things that the teacher and the students should do after uh, the students um, had watched um, the animation uh, and video. <coughs> now, before watching a video, the uh, teacher, of course, should introduce the students, uh, the video to the students, give them the title, give them the link, and also talk about the video a little bit. That, um, for example, tell them that this video will tell you about the parts of the digestive system or if it's about osteoporosis, that the causes of osteoporosis, the meaning of osteoporosis like this. Uh, and also, sometimes when the vocabulary is difficult, then the teacher can uh, make a list of just few words and then explain them uh, so that when students watch the video, they understand what they are listening to. Uh, also, um, the teacher can give pre-questions, a couple of questions, and so that the students uh, look for the answer, listen um, to the answer while watching that video. Um, <coughs> and uh, also sometimes uh, the teacher, the students, they don't know what to do, how to watch, what, how to uh, take notes. So we, we help them. We um, tell them uh, the procedures, mm -hmm. what they should do before, uh, while watching, after watching. Okay, now while watching the, um, a video, the students, the students should not uh, watch passively without having a task. They should always have a task, <coughs> either to take notes of the, like the body parts or the parts of the heart or the causes of osteoporosis and the treatment, uh, stuff like that. Uh, uh, they, they uh, for example, take notes of the examples, the main ideas, uh, the details, uh, pay attention to specific information uh, related to the questions that the teacher has given them before watching the video. They can make an outline of uh, the video, the content of the video, and also answer the questions while um, watching. After watching a video, the students uh, can work in small groups or either individually in pairs or in small groups um, to answer the question or, or to do a particular task, discuss answers. They can summarize or retell um, the video or, or, or the content of the video orally or in writing. Uh, flow charts, diagrams, photos, mind maps, lots of things can be used to summarize the information and also discuss difficulties uh, because uh, the students will have some difficulties so the teacher should listen to them and um, see which difficulties uh, they have. <coughs> now the teacher's role, uh, the teacher is a facilitator. She helps the students. Uh, also she provides guidance 
and um, gives feedback while uh, the students are listening and answering questions. Uh, it, uh, of course, when uh, the students start at the beginning of the semester, they will have difficulty with the videos, they won't understand, and uh, like my students, they did not understand anything. So little by little, they will be improving. So it's good to tell them that, oh, now you are very good, I'm very pleased to give words of, of encouragement and also give credit. Some these students like marks. <laughs> you give them one point, they kill themselves and do <laughs> everything that you want. You give them two, they go crazy and uh, work day and night. <laughs> okay, so it's nice to give them one mark, two marks, and also encourage the students to um, talk about the content of the video, uh, whether orally or in writing, and not to worry about mistakes. Usually students are afraid of making mistakes, grammatical mistakes, pronunciation mistakes, and we teachers, sometimes we pick, we try to focus on the mistakes, and we think we need to correct as many mistakes as we can, but uh, my experience um, teaching English um, showed me that uh, just ignore the mistakes while the students are working, and little by little they, they improve. Uh, if you want to correct mistake, just correct you. Just one thing, one grammatical point, or a couple of pronunciation uh, mistakes. And even if the students are poor and they are not doing very well, just thank them and show them that you appreciate their effort. <coughs> now, the skills developed uh, with online videos and animations, um, you, we can develop all kinds of skills. Listening, speaking, reading, writing, uh, vocabulary, uh, listening comprehension, listening for main ideas, supporting details, uh, auditory discrimination, that's uh, in terms of sounds and phonemes, and also note-taking, speaking, pronunciation, production of ideas, reading, same thing, reading comprehension, reading speed, uh, context clues, writing, for example, topics, uh, they can write the topic, sense, or main idea, supporting details, uh, and they can make an outline. Uh, vocabulary is very important in, in medicine, technical terms, so they can uh, write a definition, uh, derive meaning from context, or break words into their components, uh, especially medical terms. They consist of uh, medical roots uh, with prefixes and uh, <coughs> suffixes. So we teach them uh, how to break words into suffixes and prefixes and roots. Okay, now these are examples of uh, medical videos. They are, these are just screenshots. Uh, so he, this one is heart anatomy, visible body, human circulatory system, the heart anatomy, different ones. There is even a lot more. So you can look at the time like the first one, uh, four minutes, uh, 23 seconds, four minutes, 24 minutes, this is too long. For beginners, nine minutes, maybe at the end of the first semester, uh, we can use this. So there are different ones. The content can be more or less similar, but the way they approach the topic will be different. Okay, so this is, uh, these are just uh, examples, okay. I'm going to play the one, uh, this one, over here, uh, to show you how to um, ask questions, what to look for. Uh, so I'm going to go out of here and then go to that video. Okay. Comprise your cardiovascular system, which circulates blood and oxygen so around your body. In fact, your heart pumps about five quarts of blood every minute, and it beats about 100,000 times in one day. That's about 35 million times in a year. Oxygen-poor blood, blue blood, returns to the heart after circulating through your body. The right side of the heart, composed of the right atrium and ventricle, collects and pumps the blood to the lungs through the pulmonary arteries. The lungs refresh the blood with a new supply of oxygen, making it turn red. Oxygen-rich blood, red blood, then enters the left side of the heart, composed of the left atrium and ventricle, 
and is pumped through the aorta to the body to supply tissues with oxygen. Four valves within your heart keep your blood moving the right way. The tricuspid, mitral, pulmonary, and aortic valves work like gates on a fence. They open only one way and only when pushed on. Each valve opens and closes once per heartbeat or about once every second. A beating heart contracts and relaxes. Contraction is called systole and relaxing is called diastole. During systole, your ventricles contract, forcing blood into the going to your lungs and body, much like ketchup being forced out of a squeeze bottle. The right ventricle contracts a little bit before the left ventricle does. Your ventricles then relax during diastole and are filled with blood coming from the upper chambers, the left and right okay, atria. I'm stop it and go back to the These are more examples, um, videos about osteoporosis, lots of, lots of videos, did they? So we can pick the short ones, 40 seconds, one uh, uh, minute and 30 seconds and so on. And these are just links to some of them. So I'm going to just show a couple of activities very quickly. So we can have a table like this one and uh, divided into um, columns and uh, for example parts of the heart and you can list uh, the parts of the heart and then the students can write down the part of speech they need to know which word is a verb and which one is a noun an adjective like that pulmonary for example here it's used as an, ad as an adjective so they should uh, know and then they can divide the words into prefixes, suffixes, roots. Of course, at first they won't uh, know how to divide them into prefixes, suffixes, roots. Uh, so the teacher can show them how to uh, divide, okay, um, uh, technical terms into prefixes, suffixes, and roots. And then they can listen, for example, to the function of each, the atrium, the ventricle, the uh, bicuspid valve, and for example, this word, Aorta, we have the same word in Arabic, we say aorta. So Arab <laughs> students might say aorta, mm -hmm. like Arabic, not aorta. So we have to, uh, and also the diastole and systole. It's not diastole and systole, mm -hmm. uh, like we know from sim similar spelling uh, uh, of uh, the last syllable. Um, okay, now we can, uh, more activities, we can focus on for example, pronunciation, aorta, systolic, uh, diastolic, atrium, pulmonary, word formation, osteoporosis, uh, hypotension, hypertension, <coughs> and so on. Also, it's important to teach them singular and plural, especially of uh, words, uh, Latin words, because the singular and plural is different. Uh, like uh, radius, uh, the plural is not radiuses, it's radii, and also how to pronounce it, because it's spelled with double I, two I's. Um, so we teach them also bacteria, that bacteria is plural, which is very common, and singular is bacterium, formula, it has two formulae and formulas. Uh, listening comprehension, we answer, they, uh, students answer comprehension questions about details, about, uh, for example, the, uh, how, how many pulses per minute, amount of blood, uh, and uh, speaking, they give an oral summary of the video, describe the heart, the parts, the valves, the four chambers, and what, what they do, and also they can do the same thing in writing. Uh, we can ask questions that require the students to classify, synthesize information, define, uh, give examples, it depends on the content of the video. Now, things to remember, uh, technology does not teach by itself, and learning is not automatic, even with technology, and the importance of uh, the learner's active role, importance of teacher's guidance. Okay, that's the end of it. Of course, uh, set a time limit, uh, and you can put some of the, include some of the video content on test, uh, and 
We can create an online medical animations and video repository. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have any questions or comments? I would like your video. Thank your you. PowerPoint. It, how could I get it? I can give you a copy. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> It's, mm -hmm. uh, I put it right here on the desktop. Lo oh, beautiful. Yes. So we can just put it on the desktop. desktop. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Can you send it by email, maybe? Sorry? Send it by email. I think it's easier rather than everybody with a stick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah? We could leave a list and uh, ah, okay. leave our yeah, email address. Wasn't Kathleen going to put some of them on the website, though? No, I asked them because yeah. I asked at another document, uh, another one, and they said, I said, are you going to upload, the, the, you know, will this conference yeah. upload? And she said no. She said it's... No, it's only for members. Uh, for members. Yeah. Yes, yes, but you know... Not, uh, sorry. I'm a chicken. So that's why I'm very grateful if I'm at the conference that if somebody gives me a... Yeah, I've started it. Oh, okay. You've got that. Okay, here. Okay. Thank you. And we start another one over here. The keyboard is different from our keyboard. I don't know what to get. Okay, thank you. Rima, all the letters are small. Yes, if you wish to write an email. Okay. Uh, no, that can. That must be this. Oh. Can I stop this? Oh, can I stop it?